Here's a slide saying... <laughs> now, only after you have mastered the chain rule should you be able to jump to this. And I hope by this point that this makes sense. If y is equal to sine of some function f of x, then dy dx is cosine f of x times the derivative of f of x. If y is equal to cosine f of x, then dy dx equals negative sine f of x times f dash of x. If y is equal to tangent f of x, then dy dx is equal to secant squared f of x times f dash of x. If y is equal to e to the f of x, then dy dx is equal to e to the f of x times f dash of x. If y is equal to the natural log of some function f of x, then dy dx is 1 over f of x times the derivative of that function. And last but not least, if y is equal to some function f of x to the n power, then the derivative is equal to, bring that out in front, n times f of x to the n minus 1 times the derivative of whatever that function was. If you understand this, then you're ready to go on. I have one final thought here on the chain rule. One thing you have to remember is your trig identities. Remember that secant x is really 1 over cosine x, and cosecant x is really 1 over sine x, and cotangent x is really 1 over tangent x. Well, how does that work with the chain rule? For example, if we're asked to find the derivative of ddx of cosecant x, we could recognize that it is really taking the derivative of 1 over sine x, because those are equal. Well, we could write that as sine x to the negative 1. Because it's in the denominator, we'll bring it up top. Let's find the derivative of that. Well, that would be negative 1 times sine x to the negative 2. Chain rule says now we have to take the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. So we really have negative 1 times cosine x, negative cosine x, divided by sine x squared, which we could write like that.